G'day mate and welcome back to Shipbuilding Basics with me, Jedi. Today in this ongoing series, I want to cover the next thing, being crushes. I want to cover everything from basic crushing to asteroid re-rolling. Can't forget advanced crushing. We should probably also touch on some more advanced features like smart asteroid re-rolling and maybe we'll even talk about the asteroid roulette. But before I fill your head with a whole lot of information, because I don't want you to forget, can I just ask a simple favor? That being, can I borrow a like? I just like to borrow a like. I like to borrow a like early in the video. If you didn't find the video informative, you didn't learn anything along the way, by all means, you can have your like back. So let's start off with uh, the crushes themselves. The crushes themselves have three different recipes, one for iron, one for carbon, and of course, one for ice. And then as you progress through the game, you're going to unlock a couple of extra recipes. Uh, one set you're going to unlock after you've finished on Vulcanus, another set you're going to unlock after you've finished on Gleba, but we should probably cover quality first. Quality, we don't have a lot to talk about. We have the basic quality, which has a crafting speed of one, and then we have a legendary at the extreme other end, which has a base crafting speed of 2.5. This is not like the asteroid collectors, where you have a whole lot of advantages for getting bigger and better ones. Uh, they're pretty simple. As for power usage, which is going to be your biggest concern when you start getting these guys up and running, because you're going to need a few of them ever on every ship, uh, they actually use 550 kilowatts worth of power, which is an awful lot of power. And considering that your best power solutions early game is going to be nothing but solar. If you're around novice, you're going to need to have three solar panels to get a single crusher to run in novice orbit. If you're around Vulcanus, due to the extra power, you're going to be only need about a solar panel and a half. So it's a lot easier there. If you're all the way out at full goal up, you're going to need seven and a half solar panels for every single one crusher. And if you happen to be traveling all the way out to Aquilo and you want to run one of these bad boys on solar, well, I got bad news. Uh, you're going to need to have 15 of these guys, 15 solar panels to run one single crusher. So the only advantage of going up from a standard quality up to a legendary quality means a higher base crafting speed, which means in theory, you could have less of them. As crushers are going to be pretty important to everything you're going to be doing in space, having them cycle up to a higher quality is not a bad thing, but it's not something I spend a lot of time and effort on. As for our recipes, we have, as I said, the basic crushing. Basic crushing does have a few things that we need to talk about. Obviously, the metal asteroid goes in and iron ore comes out with a 20% chance to get back the asteroid we put in. If we look at this one, well, it's going to output 20 iron ore. If we look at carbon, we still have that 20% chance to get the asteroid back out, but we're only going to get 10 carbon from this particular recipe. Finally, if we look at ice, we're only going to get five ice, still with that 20% chance to get the asteroid back out. So it's something you need to consider when you're building these sort of setups, that they are going to be able to occasionally pop the asteroid back out, which means you need to reprocess it. There's a lot of different ways to reprocess it. In this particular case, we're feeding it back into the main line. Another one that is a real favorite of mine is a very simple setup like this, where we have our asteroid crusher, and we make sure that if it ha outputs any asteroids onto the belt, at the rear, which is where any of the extra 20% that get kicked out are automatically kicked out onto a belt behind the system, uh, that actually turns off the inserter at the front. So we can say this guy, see this guy is currently disabled by control behavior because there was an asteroid on this belt. There was an asteroid on this belt. He can't put any more in, which means that we've isolated this, this little area and we don't have to put items back out onto the main asteroid belt. Lots of different options when it comes to asteroids and asteroid crashing. So this is one I very much like because it's very small and it's very compact and it definitely lets me neaten up individual crushes around the place. After we finish at Vulcanus, we get access to the asteroid re-rolling process. The asteroid re-rolling process, again, we have three different recipes, one for iron, one for carbon, and one for ice. They all share a similar property. Of course, that being whatever asteroid you put in, you have a 40% chance of getting that exact asteroid back out. But on top of that, also have a 40% chance of getting one of the other two asteroids out. It's all even odds, doesn't matter which recipe we're looking at, but it does mean that they have a good chance of rolling a different asteroid type. If you're in the inner system, i.e. anything prior to Aquilo, you'll find that ice is probably one of those items a little bit hard to get, so you're probably going to want to have these set up. Possibly rolling ice, all depends on where you are and what particular ship is doing. If you're further out past Quillo, you're going to find out you're going to have nothing but ice. So you need to have the crushers roll most of your iron and most of your carbon that way. Next one we want to look at is the advanced crushing recipe. The advanced crush crushing recipe you don't get access to after you've finished off Gleb up. And when you've done that, you get access to well, iron ore crushing. Except the difference is rather than us getting 20 iron ore, we're going to get 10 iron ore 
and four copper. We also drop from a 10% chance of getting our asteroid back to just a 5% chance. Uh, but we also have the same for carbon. Again, we go from 10 carbon down to five carbon, but now we also have access to two bits of sulfur with half the chance of getting our, half the previous chance of getting our asteroid back. And then of course we have the ice one, which is gonna give us ice, but also it's now gonna give us calcite. Now this one leads us to a couple of rare opportunities and wonderful opportunities. One of them, of course, as we've been doing up until now, is making fuel. When we have access to the advanced crushing recipe, we also get access to an advanced fuel type. The advanced fuel type takes in carbon and calcite, or, well, and iron and calcite, and it's gonna give us a whole lot more fuel. We're still gonna to need to take in water, and in fact, we're gonna actually consume more water in this recipe, but rather than us putting out a measly 32 water per second, 37 fuel per second, yep, uh, we're gonna output 150. So it is gonna output a whole lot more fuel every single second. Also, it's gonna use less car carbon and also less iron at the cost of calcite and a whole lot more water. So something you need to keep in mind as you get access to these recipes, it's also gonna slightly complicate how you've set up your existing engine block because rather than just having to get in three items, one being iron, one being carbon, and one being ice, you now also have to get in calcite to the system. So definitely something to consider. Next thing I want to talk about is, well, crushing. Crushing itself. You could either do a couple of different options. You could crush on site, and that's something I definitely set up in select circumstances. The other option is you could do mass crushing. And I have a tendency, uh, as I've progressed in the game, to tend to do mass crushing, where I just bring in all my ice, and I just have a whole row of crushes that are all outputting onto a belt. We're making sure we have a couple of splitters in here to sideload to make sure we're going to balance out both sides of the belt as best we can doesn't really need to have a high output priority on it just as long as it's going to output a little bit here and a little bit there and on top of that i've made sure that these actually output onto the rear belt with a simple priority back in from the rear belt yeah so any new ice asteroids come in uh well any replacement ice asteroids come in from a main belt that is nothing but ice and any asteroids that have been reprocessed, bonus asteroids we've got back out, are their priority fed back into the main line so we can have a second chance of crushing them. Carbon is set up much the same, not a lot of a change here, and then iron is much the same. Of course, you're sending iron out to a couple of odd things, like weapons, this is something that you're probably gonna set up fairly early game, couple of smelters, single assembly machine, making a whole lot of yellow ammo. We need to talk about ammo and weapons, but I think that needs to wait for a future video. One thing we definitely wanna spend a little bit of time talking about is asteroid re-rolling. Now, asteroid re-rolling, as you can see, I have iron here, and I'm just feeding iron into our little iron build. I'm also taking any excess iron and putting it through asteroid re-rolling. Asteroid re-rolling, I just have, well, three machines. Three machines doing one recipe, three machines doing the next recipe, three machines doing the next recipe, with an extra one doing iron, because I don't know what's going to come in on this belt. It's random asteroids. There is some predictability, depending on where you are on the system. In fact, inside of the Factopedia, you can actually look at these graphs and see what the distribution of asteroids are, but that doesn't guarantee that you, you break down and pick up every single asteroid that you pass along the way. So, having a system that rerolls asteroids is a great idea, but it does come with a couple of caveats. The first big caveat being, well, if you're not using the resources that are coming out of the crushing recipe, and especially if you're relying on that for other resources you may be lacking on, you might end up with a situation like this, where I have iron, I have ice, but I don't have any carbon because, well, everything's backed up. So it's something you need to really put into your design, something you need to think about, which leads us on to, well, not just asteroid re-rolling, but smart asteroid re-rolling. I actually have two systems here, both I've spent a little bit of time working on, and they both have some definite pros and cons. The first one I wanna talk about, it's very, very simple to set up, and it actually comes with a dedicated crushing right here. So of course I have my carbon asteroid, my ice asteroids, and my iron asteroids are all processed right here, and then sent out as those raw resources straight off to the engine block, and also of course the ammo creation, because this produced an awful lot of resources. You can tell that because we have the speed modules in there, which means we're producing things extra fast. On top of that, because these are very fairly power hungry, you don't have a lot of power early to mid in your space adventures. I actually have a beacon full of efficiency modules to drag down their power usage on every single machine, but then I've negated that by putting in speed modules. But it does mean that uh, the 16 crushes you see here 
I actually represent around about 25 of them uh, because they're not running at a base speed of one, they're running at a base speed of, well, an improved speed of 1.6 for the exact same amount of power usage. As for how the smart system works, we actually have a couple of commoners that are hooked up to every single machine with the set recipe turned on, which means the combinators actually get to decide which recipe is running. And in this particular example, I've made sure it's just as broken as the last one, where I'm only feeding in two different types of asteroid. I'm only feeding in iron and carbon. And as you can see, I have an awful lot of ice rolling around the system. And that is because on the belt that featured in the last video, when we're looking at the asteroid collectors, I'll of course link that up in the top right hand corner. It'll also be down in the description below we have a very, very simple belt reader. Uh, it's reading how many ice are on the belt with a simple, if it is higher than this amount, can we please output this particular recipe on the red wire and output that to all the crushes? And as you can see, they're doing a happy job crushing what they can. We ha also have the exact same for carbon and the same for iron. You might actually notice that iron is the item I have the least amount of uh, because we've crushed a lot of the iron and everything else. Yeah, every system has its pros and cons. This one's a... Uh, con i guess you could call it is it does have a habit occasionally of changing the recipes far too often after it stabilizes and by that it's a mostly stable system so it's probably okay that it's randomly changing recipes rather than accidentally making too much iron and then having to reverse course and make too much carbon and therefore just deleting asteroids for the fun of it but this is a smart asteroid re-rolling system being that it's smart it can be fed from just one asteroid type or two if you prefer maybe even all three all depends on how you want to set this up i generally set it up to just take in all the asteroids off the main asteroid capture belt and just send them in here and don't move them on because once they're in this system they never need to leave this system because i'm actually doing as i said all my end product crushing right here inside my re-roller. Then of course I have a slightly more advanced setup, a slightly more advanced setup that's doing a couple of extra things. Rather than just having a simple read off the belt, it has a couple of safety precautions built in, I guess you might call it. One, it has a dedicated iron creation, which is gonna be powered no matter what, just pumping out iron and setting off the guns for the just in case scenario, because this also has a smart condition that makes sure that we have enough power in the accumulators. If we don't, we turn this bad boy off because although I have the beacon in the middle, just like before, with efficiency modules, this time tier three, uh, these guys also have speed modules in every single one of them, and they're tier three, which means they actually use less power than the previous system. Uh, but then again, I have a whole separate area set up for actual asteroid processing and turning into rare, rare, rare goods. Because as you can see from this system, we're not doing crushing inside this block. We're actually pulling out the resources and sending them off as solid belts. Also, I've uh, cheated this system a little bit. It's only getting fed iron. It's not getting fed anything else. So it's only bringing in iron and then it's having to reprocess everything else. As you can see, it still is occasionally rolling ice and different other things, but generally doesn't swap the recipes nearly as often uh, because it's a little bit smarter with a high, low and extreme limit, which means it doesn't change the recipes quite as often as this one does with it randomly cycling as things reach equilibrium. Anyway, back to this. So because it's bringing out solid belts worth of ice, carbon, and also iron, in my case, I'm avoiding some of it, but as long as the belts are not being used, not being consumed, they're allowed to back up and back back into this system, which means I can do my asteroid processing elsewhere, which is especially helpful when you get into advanced asteroid crushing. But speaking of advanced recipes, We've advanced enough in this video that I need to ask you that like that I wanted to borrow at the start. Is there any chance I can keep it? Also, maybe you should click subscribe at the same time so you don't miss out on the next part of the series. This is how we set up the basic crushing recipes and this is how I set up the advanced crushing. It's very, very similar. It's intentionally very, very similar. So once I unlock this technology or once a ship has been upgraded enough or that I want to get into advanced crushing and get those advanced goodies that come out of it, it's a simple one-for-one -one replace over the old system. We have our iron and copper up here at the top. We then have our ice and calcite uh, here in the middle. And of course we have the carbon and sulfur at the bottom. 
And again, uh, these are set up not so much with a whole lot of smarts turning on and turning off the different crushes. Uh, these are actually set up with a very simple belt smarts with the calcite outputting first and then the ice being output afterwards, which means that the calcite recipe should always run. And when we have some sort of consumption of ice, which we do have a little bit, it makes sure that these machines can run whereas the basic machines won't run. And because I have the ability to have all my belts back up and back all the way back to the advanced, pro well, the advanced free roller, it doesn't matter if I have a full belt of ice asteroids doing a whole lot of nothing, that really doesn't affect me. Speaking of modules, if you're interested in these modules, the advanced free rollers or anything else we're gonna be covering in this video, they are all, all available in my Patreon pack where you can get access to all the blueprints and even the save files for my Let's Play and also stream series. So with advanced crashing, as I said, we get access to the calcite, the sulfur, also the copper, which means we can get access to a couple of extra things in space. One of them being, of course, foundries. Foundries means rather than us bringing in iron ore and having to run it through an electric smelter, we can then, well, mass turn it into molten iron. And then we can make special things like, well, molten plate, mm, convert molten iron into plate in space. Also, we can make steel a whole lot easier. At the same time, we can make a whole bunch of copper, which does give us advantage, does give us access to different weapon technologies. Also means if should you want to make green circuits in space, you now can, which does mean we can make other exciting things like explosives in space, which will be coming up in a future video. So I'd recommend you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already to make sure you can come back for, well, that deep dive into shipbuilding as well. If you really want to play with changing recipes in the crushes and also possibly conserving some power at the same time, you can always set up a simple module like this, which rather than having a recipe set inside the machine, we have a couple of decider combinators. The decider combinators are not set to read a whole segment of belts instead. Uh, they're actually set to just read this single belt in front of the two inserters. And then they're setting them directly into, well, these three combinators. The three combinators are deciding, hey, if there happens to be ice on that piece of belt and it is greater than one, then by all means send out the advanced oxide recipe because it means those inserters could pick that up and they could start processing that. Same applies for carbon. We have one here for carbon, for a carbon copy, and we have one here for iron as well. So as the asteroids come in, this one's gonna automatically swap between the different machine or different recipes uh, to process the different goods with the advanced recipe and kick out any excess asteroids back out the back to then being processed back through. Secondly, I have a different system, a backup system that's fed further down the belt because this came from a, well, a space factory. So on my space factory, I don't actually need to have any carbon. So we have standard iron crushing, plus we also have uh, carbon reprocessing. So any carbon asteroids that come in, we try and re-roll them into something else. And then of course I have the standard ice crushing. And this is again, read off the last two, the last two belt segments. And also I should mention, it reads the hand of what's in the actual inserters as well, just to make sure that we don't lose track of what we're actually using before we shove it in the machine. And like I said, because this came off a space factory, it turns out I don't need a whole lot of carbon, but I do need more ice and I do need more iron. Hence, we've reprocessed the carbon and put it back through the system. But again, with a couple of combinators and a little bit of recipe swapping, you can vastly cut down on the amount of power and also potentially the space that you need to assign to crushes to cover the eventuality of you need every different type of recipe for every different crusher, depending on what the what the platform's doing. You could probably cut that by back by a significant amount if you have the recipes automatically being swapped as different resources come past the crushes. Lastly, we have the asteroid roulette well. The asteroid roulette well, which takes in a random anything and then spits out legendary out the back. And what we're doing is we're bringing in any type of asteroid we're getting our hands on. And then, well, as you can see, uh, processing it with a couple of quality modules and then spitting the good ones out the back. Anything that's bad, we're gonna keep processing a few more times, hoping to convert it into a legendary. Now, sure, it does have a few faults, like it jams from time to time, and there's almost as much space used by the actual combinators themselves as the actual crusher. But when I get the kinks worked out of this system, we will have unlimited legendary space steel. So that's going to be the end of our deep dive for crushes for right now. I do imagine there'll be a follow-up video where we need to cover a few more things and probably come back to this little roulette wheel. Uh, but 
But right now, we need to move on with this series. And do tell me down below, should we look at storage next or weapons? Maybe we should look at power. I don't know. I'll look at your comments and we'll make up our mind from there. But with all that said, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed this little deep dive and explanation into crushes. And with all that said, I will see you in uh, the very next video. All right, bye.